In this video I'm going to show you how to build a crossing using our diamond line crossing kit. In this example I'm going to build a 30 degree crossing like the one I'm holding here. However the process is exactly the same for all crossings up to a 90 degree crossing. If building a 90 degree crossing such as this there's a separate set of instructions as the process is slightly different. Also if you're building a dual crossing such as this one or a quad crossing like this using one of our kits there's a separate set of instructions that highlight the differences between building a single a dual and a quad crossing uh, if you're if you're building one of those you're going to want to watch that video in addition to watching this video for a single crossing the crossing I'm building is a code 83 uh, 30 degree crossing however the steps are the same regardless of the rail size the diamond line crossing kit consists of the frog castings of which there are four uh, there's two different types. This is the center casting uh, that ends up in the center of the crossing. And then there's two K-frog castings, which are these two. They kind of look like a K. Uh, in addition to those castings, there's also the guardrail castings. There's a set of laser cut ties. These are uh, designed to match these exactly, so you can't really mix and match them. Some PC board ties and some rail that's been pre-cut and also pre-cleaned. We clean these in an ultrasonic cleaner for you. Um, when rail's produced it tends to leave a lot of oil on it and if they're not completely clean it does make them difficult to solder so we, we uh, wash them before sending them off in the kits. Also included in the kit is a wire brush which we're going to use to pre-clean the castings. These do a great job of removing any residue uh, left over on the castings from the casting process and also polish the castings quite nicely. We'll use it on the finished track work as well and on any finished solder joints because it will do uh, it does a great job of knocking down any high spots in the solder. Also included are these little sanding blocks. So we have a, a 300 grit sanding block and a 600 grit. One's for roughing and one's for finishing. When we finish the track work, the very last step is to polish the top of all the rails with these sanding blocks. And it does a really nice job of getting them all level and polished, especially the 600 grit. And we'll finish that up at the very end uh, with a track cleaner, uh, not included in the kit, but these do a good job of giving a final polish on the uh, on the, on the work. One more thing I want to focus on before we get started on the build and something you may have noticed that I focused on quite a bit so far is cleanliness. Uh, it's very important that everything you work with is clean, um, especially your hands. So the next step in the process is to wash your hands. It, it might seem like an odd thing to suggest but the oil and grease that gets on your hands transfers onto these castings and over time you will start to see fingerprints on them. Washing your hands is the easiest way to ensure that that doesn't happen. This is the way to wash your hands, wash your hands, wash your hands. The first step is going to be soldering the rail into the frog castings. Each of the castings has a pocket cast into it that is designed to accept a piece of rail. And we, we're going to slide the rail into that casting and solder it in place. Before we can do that, it's really important that we prep these properly. If you just take a raw casting from the kit and try soldering some rail in it, it's, you're, it's not going to work. You're going to really struggle with it. There's a couple of things that have to be done to make it work. These have to be cleaned um, properly and thoroughly. Fortunately, cleaning them is easily done using a wire brush. And we include one of these in the kits as they work, um, they work so well. So I'll show you the, the process to cleaning, which is simply just giving them a, a quick scrub on all the surfaces with this wire brush. I like to give the surface and the sides a fairly good scrubbing with this. And what you'll notice is the casting immediately becomes quite shiny. Gives you a nice polished nickel surface, which makes sense because we are polishing nickel. These are nickel silver castings. You want to do this to all the castings we're going to be working with. Okay, next up we're going to prep the casting to solder a piece of rail in place. Each casting has a little pocket in the end designed to accept a piece of rail like that. And we're going to be soldering it in place from the bottom. 
but as you can see on this casting it's got quite a bit of discoloration and a rough surface if we tried soldering to this it wouldn't accept this solder uh, at all so we need to clean up all the areas that we're going to be soldering onto we found the best tool for this job is one of these rotary wire brushes. These work really well at cleaning this off. Uh, it comes with a couple of caveats though. Uh, one is these spin at pretty high RPM and these little wires tend to want to shoot out. So you want to make sure you're wearing some eye protection while you're doing this. I prefer to use a rotary tool like this. This is a, a foot controlled model. However, any handheld rotary tool will work just as well. So we're just going to polish all the areas that are, we're going to be soldering onto. You may notice I also saw polished the end of this piece of rail. You can't have, you can't overclean these pieces. Um, the cleaner they are, the easier the soldering process is going to be. So I like to make sure I, I polish the end of the rail as well. It also knocks off any burrs. You may notice that the end of this rail also has a, a bit of a bevel filed onto it. We do that on purpose so we can, it, it'll, it'll ensure that the rail closes in tight into the end of the casting. Sometimes there's a little bit of um, debris left over from the casting process and adding some clearance at the bottom of the rail will ensure that that slides in there all the way like so. This can be done uh, by hand using a file, a few passes of file like this, or you can do it on a, uh, on a belt sander um, as, a, as a bulk operation to get it done quickly. Okay, we have the casting and our two pieces of rail prepped and cleaned and ready to go so we're ready to solder them in place. I'm going to talk a little bit about the soldering equipment I use. Um, after over a year of trying all different possible pieces of equipment to solder with we've come up with what we believe is the most effective and believe it or not it's it's a simple 35 watt Weller iron, the same iron that uh, that we use for building our fixtures with one noticeable difference is the tip. I'm using a screwdriver tip on here as opposed to using the pencil shaped tip that we recommend for fixture cons uh, for building track in a fixture. The difference with soldering a casting is that you don't necessarily need more power and you don't have to have more heat. But what you really have to have is good heat transfer. So you want to get as much heat out of this tip and into this casting and rail as possible for it to solder properly. So that's where these screwdriver tips work pretty good. Because of the wide area on the tip, you can really move a lot of heat from the iron to the casting. Also, we follow the same cleaning process for the tip that I show in all our assembly fixture videos, uh, in that I like to use the wire brush to clean the tip, like this. You can see it's a little bit nice and shiny there. Then I put it in some flux. I tin the tip with a little bit of solder, get a little ball of solder on there, back in the flux again like so, where it boils that tip, and then a final wire brush cleaning. And you can see that this tip is nice and shiny and ready to, ready to go to work. The other thing that's very important is applying the flux and where we put it. We don't use a lot of flux, just a little bit on a micro applicator such as this. And I put just a little bit in the groove where the rail is going to go, there and there, and a small amount on the side of the rail. We just want to leave a little bit of flux residue. You don't want to be putting a great big blob on because all they have to do is take it back off after we're done soldering. 
the right amount will burn off in the soldering process. Okay, everything is cleaned up and it's got a little bit of flux on it and we're ready to solder it in place. So I'm just going to slide it into the pocket like so. Check, make sure it's in there nice and solid. Then I'll spin it around here and we're ready to solder. So I've got the tip nice and clean. Okay, I'm going to apply the heat right in the joint between the rail and the casting and you can see almost immediately the flux started to uh, boil which is exactly what we want and I'm going to touch the solder to the tip of the iron and push it down into the into the joint. I'm just pulling it back as I add the solder. There we go. The solder's nice and nice and liquidy flowing really well. We'll let that sit for a second, freeze up, and have a look here. That looks nice, nice and solid. I like to go in with the wire brush and give it a good cleaning, a good polish. This does a couple of things. One is it uh, removes any residue, uh, flux residue left over from soldering, polishes the bottom of the, of the entire casting, and will also knock down any high spots that are left from the soldering process. So we'll give that an inspection. I can see we still got a little bit of a blob there. We don't want to see that because when we put this onto the ties, that'll keep it from sitting down flat. So I like to take a little file and just knock any of that off. That looks better. And then clean it again with the, with the wire brush. So there we go. That's a nice that's a nice uh, nice solder joint. And we can even see that the solder has flowed through and into the top, which is good. That means we got a really good, uh, good reliable joint. So I'm going to go now and solder the other piece of rail in, and I will do the opposite casting as well, so we have them all ready to go. Okay, with our center castings now finished, we can move on to the K-Frogs. Uh, the process here is pretty much exactly the same. We're going to remove this from the base, use our rotary tool to clean anywhere that we're going to solder, prep and insert the rail, solder it in place. I'm not going to spend a lot of time explaining that because we've already covered that. I'll just do a, a quick montage showing the process.
Okay, with all the rail soldered in place into the four castings, we can do a test fit to see how this is coming together. Um, they just simply drop into the pockets, cut into the laser cut ties. They shouldn't be too stiff to get in there. They should just kind of drop in, like so. And what we want to check is that the gaps are consistent on all the spots. Now, everything might not line up right now because it's still, still kind of loose, but these gaps here are perfect. There's no contact between this frog and this frog. If there is, you're going to get a short when the um, when the track work is operated. If you do find that there's the gap is a little closer than it should be, or they're touching like that, then you're going to need to file a little bit off the end of one of these. And to do that, put it back into the into the block. Put a, a, a scrap piece on the front of it, like this, clamp it in a vise, and just file a little bit off of the one uh, end that seems a bit too long. However, on this one, the gaps look good, and it doesn't require any additional uh, adjustment. So we're going to move on to the next step, which is to put the guardrails in place. I'm going to take these ones out of the way that I'm not working with. And it doesn't matter which one you want to start with, either of the K frogs. I'll start with this one. And the guardrails are on these blocks. Um, these have been filed to length already by us. Um, again, if they don't fit quite right, you may have to put them back in here and file a little bit off. There's a left and a right hand guardrail on each of these blocks. So what, what you want to look for on here is that the spacers, which are these, this is what spaces the guardrail away from the main rail, are on the inside of the guardrail piece, and they drop in like so. So there's pins on the bottom of the guardrail, and they press into the holes in the laser cut ties. So we're gonna press that down into the holes. Might have to rock it in place like I did there, and that one fits really nice there. If you find that this doesn't line up very well, you may have to pop it out and bend it a slight bit, but not too much. This, this one actually fit really good on the first try. So I'm going to pop this back out and clean it up with the wire brush and get it ready for soldering. Okay, so I've, I've polished the inside of the rail on this flat spot because that's where the solder is going to go. And I've polished some of the pins. I'm going to solder probably just the end one. It's not really necessary to solder all these in place. The, um, the, cut, the ties and the, uh, the gluing process will keep this in place when it's done. So I'm just going to add a little bit of flux on this face, like so. Drop it in, and again, sometimes you have to drop it and roll it in like that, okay? Maybe I'm going to adjust this just slightly. I don't like the way that that's sticking out. Just grab a, a set of rail cutters and just very gently bend it so it's in. I also want to check that this rail is sitting along these lines. You can see it's a little bit to one side here. So I'm going to hold the casting in place, just kind of pull it over a little bit. There we go. Now that's sitting where it's supposed to be on the tie. And we'll put this back in place. Okay. So I put a little bit of flux in there. Wherever you put the flux is where your solder is going to flow. So I'm going to apply a little bit of heat right here onto the guardrail and solder the guardrail castings together. And just adding a very small amount of solder, dragging it along. There. Now that solder flowed right down in to that joint. leaving the heat on there for a few seconds and I'm going to take a pair of tweezers and squeeze these two pieces together 
while they freeze. Just like that. I'm just going to hold that for a few seconds. And there. Now that guardrail is soldered nicely to the uh, to the stock rail. I'm going to give this a bit. Just a quick rub with the wire brush. Make sure everything's all nice and smooth. And that's it. It doesn't need a lot of solder. There's no need to go in and solder all these pins because we're going to be gluing this to the ties um, at the end of the build and that'll keep all that stuff in place. So I'm going to move on to the next guardrail. Quick buff with our wire brush. And our guardrails are sitting in place there. Okay, now I'm going to just repeat the process for the opposite side. Okay, with the last of the guardrails soldered in place, we're ready to move on to the next step, which is to solder on the circuit board ties onto the end of the rails. So we supply you with a fret of four ties. These need to be snipped off and cleaned up. It's easily done with the rail cutters. And I like to polish the surface of them as well. This is very important if you want to get a good solder joint, is to make sure that this surface is nice and clean. And a quick pass with the file on the surface does a, a good job with that. Okay, we just slip these in under the rail into the pockets at the end. And these pockets will hold the, hold the tie in the proper location while we solder it in place. We're going to use a track gauge. I'm using one of our trifecta gauges. And just set it on there. And we just want to confirm that the rail is sitting in between the lines that are etched on the ties. You can see them there. And they should be nice and centered like that. That makes, that makes sure that it's running nice and straight. And we're just going to put a little bit of flux on either side of the rail head. This process is the same as the process for soldering ties in place using an assembly fixture. Put a little bit of pressure on that gauge to hold it in place while the solder cures. Same on this side. You can see a bit of solder has come onto, wicked underneath onto this side. That's how you know you got a really good solder joint. Like so. That first one's in place, and I'll just carry on and do the other three. Okay, with all the PC board ties soldered in place at the end, the final step is we're going to glue the, the uh, rail onto the wood ties. So we'll gently remove this from the ties. You don't want to yank it because it's a little fragile in this state but it's all together as a single piece. So we're going to apply a bead of plyobon on the base of all the rails 
and we're going to apply it on all the webs between the ties on this entire piece. So you're just going to run a bead down just going to run a bead down on all the ties wherever there's a web because that's where something is going to be sitting. Plowbond's a, a contact type of, of adhesive so you need to have it on both surfaces. You let the liquid evaporate slightly and when the two surfaces make contact with each other they bond. A slight amount of clamping pressure and it uh, or heat or both and you get a really really good bond this will last forever okay so we're just gonna let that sit for a couple of minutes until all the liquid is evaporated out of it okay that's cured it's uh, dry to the touch but still tacky and now we're just gonna drop this into place like so and all the pockets and holes will line everything right back up engage the way we want it okay with the two pieces stuck together we can take this and clamp it. Um, it the best way is to put something on top of it and you can weight this down if you have a couple of pieces of spare scrap wood you could sandwich it between two pieces and put it in a vise and let it sit for an hour or so and that'll really get this uh, clamped in place. If you can get a lot of pressure on it, it goes a long ways to making sure that everything's sitting on a nice even plane. I've had this clamped for a while and now it's sitting nice and flat, everything's glued in place, it's nice and secure. So I'm ready to do the final finishing on the uh, on the rails and that's where these sanding blocks come in place. I like to do a quick pass across the surface and what this is going to do is is level out any high and low spots that may be in the castings. Okay, so that's a, a good rough pass and now I'm going to follow up with the 600 grit as a finish pass. Okay. Now we've given that a a good coat, a good pass over, and it's nice and smooth. I also like to take a a file and clean up a little bit in the flangeways, just to make sure everything lines up, knocks off any any high and low spots, removes any spots that a wheel could uh, could trip up a little bit. These files do a pretty good job of it, as do these feather edge files. This one's kind of been around since the beginning of time, starting to show its age. But they have a nice sharp edge and they do a really good job of getting in to the flange way, like so. You can see how nice and straight everything is, everything lines up. This does a good job of just making sure that all the edges line up. Okay, see we've gotten quite a mess there. The final pass, I'm going to use a Bright Boy track cleaner. This puts a final polish on the surface of all the of all the rail. There, that looks pretty good. We'll give it a test spin with a set of trucks. Beautiful, nice, smooth as glass. Same here. That's what we want to see. The last step is to cut off these little boxes around the PC board tie. Those are in place just to uh, just to align the ties when we were soldering it in. Snip them off with a with a utility knife. It's a fairly hard cut, so you you're going to need a solid blade to get through this. But once you do, this will pop off, and we just throw these away. There we go. There's our 30 degree Code 83 
Diamond Line Crossing.